Magazine. Thank you all for joining um, and sparing the time. My name is Moaz Anuri, and today we will be I will be introducing to you Elastic Stack in order to enable you to search at scale. Every word that we have in the title and we have in the slides, we will be explaining and we will be drilling down into it to see how it is related to the big data and related to the um, analytics capability. So, as I mentioned, my name is Moaz Anuri, and I am very uh, humble and lucky to be the founder and the managing director of Skilled Field. Skilled Field is a field full of skilled professionals, is an IT consultancy professional services company, and we work in big data. Myself, I'm coming from a telecommunication background, and then I uh, fall back into telecommunication, big data domain and then I move into big data for cybersecurity observability uh, among others. I have um, long work experience in IT consultancy and professional services company um, in Australia and outside Australia. Here's the agenda for today and here's what we are going to cover today. First of all, I, I'm going to give you one slide about skill field just to give you the context about what we are doing and how um, the thing that we're talking about today fits in the picture. We, I am going to uncover the need for relevant real-time insights at scale. Remember, remember, relevant real-time at scale insights. Then I will introduce Elastic, a search company. Then I will be talking about the power of search, Elastic stack as a multiplier, deployment flexibilities, and demo. In this presentation, and I am assuming that you guys have no or limited knowledge about Elastic and Elastic Stack and what it does. So I'll be I'll be talking about this today. So as I said, as a start, I'll provide you with a, um, an introduction about skill field. As I mentioned, it's a field full of skilled professionals. What we do is that we utilize big data technologies in order to solve complex problems by making simplified solutions. We are motivated by using big data solutions in order to resolve complex problems for our customers. The problems that we resolve to the customers can be one of three. One of them is to uplift security detection and cyber and response capability. This is utilizing big data technologies in order to, to do that. This can be done by deploying a centralized uh, security event logging and auditing, endpoint protection, security automation, advanced security analytics, or co-managed services. Another service we do for our customers by utilizing big data technologies is to uplift the observability capability. We can do this by having a centralized operational event monitoring and alerting AI operations and common services. And on top of that, we utilize our big data analytics services and practice to into improve the maturity of our customers for their analytic services and move them from BI business intelligence to AI artificial intelligence. We take the customer and walk them through the journey of big data analytics, starting from the design, develop, engineer, migrate, analyze, manage, and provide insights using machine learning and AI. So let's uncover the need. Nowadays, Users are spoiled with the search experience that Google is providing, that Yelp is providing, that LinkedIn is providing. People are used to that search experience. Nowadays, if you are with your friends and some of them tell a story, you simply pull your mobile and Google it in order to verify the information or answer any questions that has been raised, right? This is the kind of experience that the user are that the users are expecting when they talk about big data analytics, when they are talking about um, big data analytics in a work environment. So this is what the users would expect from the data analytics capability within your organization. They would expect that whenever I need information, I am able to search it and, and get search it real time. So get the latest updated information about what's going on on the business get relevant information don't give me information that's not related to me or to my question i need relevant information number three is at scale regardless of the amount of data that you have in the background i want relevant real time at scale insights from my data the same user experience the same experience that the users are having today from google from yelp 
from LinkedIn, from all those in platforms, they are expecting the same when it comes to the organizations. And why would you even ask for less, right? The technology is there, the capability is there. You will demand your IT team, your data, big data analytics strategy team in order to give you the same experience. So that's the that's the need. However, the problem is that there are too many informations in any organization. There are too many informations, whether they are machine generated data, structured or human generated data, whether they are structured, unstructured, semi structured data. Informations is overwhelming us. There are too many information, there are too many data sources, there's too much data. So, how can we provide insights relevant, real time, at a scale to customers? with all these overwhelming information. The answer is simple. We believe that search is the key. Search is the core component for any of those for any in order to enable you to enable, in order to be able to answer that in order to be able to help your um, your key stakeholders to be able to help the people in the organization. Search is key. In order to be able to answer any question, you need to be able to search the data. In order to provide any insights, you need to be able to search the data. So search is the core component for any data analytic capability and any data analytic services that you want to provide to your, to your internal customers or external customers. And as I said, the need and the expectations are arising in the industry based on what we see Google and Yelp and other companies are doing. Here comes Elastic. Elastic is a search company. Elastic is a search company that enables you to search your data at a speed, real time, at a scale, regardless of the number of data that's in the background, and also return to you relevant information. And I will be touching base on this and tell you how Elastic can help you with these with these to answer those requirements and to address these demands. For people who knows me, they know that this is one of my favorite slides. Any data engineering pipeline in the world, any, whenever you have a data engineering project or data engineering initiative, this is the main components of it. You have data sources, you need to acquire the data sources, and then once you get, the, you need to acquire the data from the data sources. Once you do that, you need to parse and process the data. If it's structured, you need to make it against the data model. If it's unstructured, you make it structured. If it's semi-structured, make it structured or so. You need to pass the data. You need to make it something that you can write code on top of it. Then you enrich the data. Enrich the data is adding contextual information to the data. What does it mean? As an example, if you look at the list of attendees in this call, you can see that Astrid has been associated as a co-host. This is an enrichment, so we would know that Astrid is a co-host in this call. My name is a host. It means that I am a host. It's, it's a contextual information that has been added. So say, for example, that later on, I want to get a report for the time people have joined. Knowing when did the host and the co-host join the meeting, it's of great value because it tells me whether they joined on time, early, or late, right? So whenever you want to add more contextual information <clears throat> excuse me to the data it's called enrichment and it adds contextual information that will help you provide better insights to the um, to the data analytics use case and then once you enrich then you analyze so this is the standard data engineering pipeline as i said to, re to recap there is a data source you acquire the data from the data source and then you massage the data you you uh, process the data. This is what we are calling parsing, data engineering part. Then you enrich the data, you add any more contextual information to the data, and then you analyze the data in order to provide insights or answer any questions you have. How does Elastic help you with this? So let's start from the left, right. So we have data sources, we want to acquire the data. How do we acquire the data? So the Elastic provides you with different ways to collect the data. And I don't know if you can see my cursor, but if you look at the at the bottom, there are beats, endpoints, and log stash. These are the tools that are used by Elastic to collect the data, to acquire the data from the data sources. Let's talk about them. Beats. Beats is a very lightweight software. 
is a very lightweight software that can be installed on any system. It's used to collect data from different data for data sources. The great thing about Beats is that it comes with too many modules. Those modules are to prepare the data for, for the non-data sources. What do I mean by this? Say, for example, that you want to get data from your Windows logs, from your Windows machine. What you do is that you install a Windows Beats, and Windows Beats has the modules that tag the traffic with the windows type and then when they reach in elastic they are being passed i'll touch based on this later say for example that you want to get uh, apache logs say that you want to get firewall logs say you want to get um aws logs cloud trail or uh, cloud trail or any other any other logs beats is a very lightweight agent that can be installed on any host if it allows or on any external host and then used to collect the data from those different data sources is very lightweight. It doesn't parse the data. It only does the data acquisition. It tags the data with a data type based on the module and then sends it to Elasticsearch for processing. So that's Beats. The second way to collect data is endpoint, Elastic endpoint. That's the endpoint security. Um, and that's the endpoint, Elastic endpoint. It's a security, um, it's a security agent that Elastic installs on the endpoints in order to collect some security logs and security information. This collector has a specific goal and specific objectives. Now, if I want to collect data from a strange data source, not the standard data source, I have my own custom developed application or I have my own database or, or there's new data source that there is no module in file beats that I can use. It's not an endpoint that I can use then we can always use Logstash. Logstash is a powerful ETL tool. ETL means extract, transfer, and load. It's a powerful ETL tool that can read from any source, message the data, parse the data, and then send them somewhere else, load them somewhere else. This is where Logstash can load them into Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch is the data store layer. Elasticsearch is the heart of the whole stack. All those data sources ingesting data into Elasticsearch. Now, in case of Logstash, as I said, if we built a parser, if we are do the data engineering and the parsing in Logstash, then we will post the data directly in Elasticsearch, ready to be analyzed. Now, bits and endpoints, what they do is that they ingest the data into Elasticsearch, tag the data with based on the module that this is a Palo Alto firewall logs, this is a Windows logs. Then what Elasticsearch does is that it, it has ingestion pipelines. Those ingestion pipelines does the parsing, does the parsing and process the logs against Elastic Common Schema, against standard data model, and which means that they're ready to be processed and analyzed. So whether we are doing the that the parsing on Logstash or we are doing it on Elasticsearch, it's being done. So these are the data collection, the beats, endpoints, Logstash are the data collection. Elasticsearch with its ingestion pipelines does the parsing. How do we do the enrichment then? With the enrichment, if we are using Logstash, Logstash, as I said, is a very powerful tool. You can always use Logstash in order to do those enrichments. If you're using beads, then the way you can do the enrichments is by using also the ingestion pipeline, the ingestion pipelines in Elasticsearch. Say, for example, that you want to add um, a city name based on the GeoIP information. This can be done by uh, ingestion pipelines in Elasticsearch. So Elasticsearch is the heart of the stack. It's where the data is stored. It's where the data is um, breaking down into pieces. It's where the data is organized. This is the main data store. And I'll be talking a little bit about this, its scalability shortly. So that's the Kibana the Elastic. And then Kibana comes on top of it. What is Kibana? Kibana is Kibana is the eye towards Elasticsearch. It's the tool that's used to control Elasticsearch. It's the tool, it's the tool that's used to configure Elasticsearch. It's the tool that's used to troubleshoot Elasticsearch. It's the tool that's used to troubleshoot and look at the beats, the log stash as well. In the new versions, we've noticed that uh, Kiba, uh, Elastic have added in Kibana fleet management and other features. So Kibana is the management tool 
that's used to manage the stack that's number one number two in last kibana is a very powerful user friendly and easy to use data analytics tool so you can use kibana a to manage the complete stack and b you will use kibana to do data analytics build dashboards visualizations run, run the machine learning jobs etc this is elastic stack so when people talk to you about elastic stack you need to understand that the elastic stacks i'll go back to the previous slide the elastic stack provides you with a complete capability for a complete data engineering pipeline that's why when we said that elastic is a search company yes it's a search company that can do search and everything above that the search is only the basic function that's why they are classifying themselves as a search company because as we said the search is the core component of any data analytics capability Elastic is a search company that can do everything else. How they can do can everything else? By having a stack that represents the complete end-to-end -end data engineering pipeline that consists of Beats, Endpoints, Logstash, Elasticsearch, and Hearts, and Kibana as a visualization tool. Now that's the Elastic stack. You will hear people saying that Elastic has three applications, <laughs> Enterprise Search, Observability, Elastic Security. What are they? Now. You can use Elastic Stack for any use case. You can use Elastic Stack for any use case. And in order to prove that in today's demo, which Astrid will help me by running it today, Astrid is demonstrating a use case that's not related to the enterprise search or observability or security. She's actually doing analysis for some of the Australian exchange stock uh, stocks. So it's completely different use case. However, those three use cases are the most common use cases on Elastic Stack. What Elastic has done is that they have invested heavily in those three use cases and they have built predefined modules, predefined configurations in order to make it easy for users to use Elastic Stack for those three common use cases. What are the three common uses? Use three common use cases enterprise search. What's enterprise search? When you are giving your people on the website, visitors on the website, or your staff a Google search-like experience, this enterprise search will connect to all the data sources, and you can have on your intranet um, or on a separate search window a search bar where you can search the data and the data will, and search for information in tickets, Slack, etc. Enterprise search it searches human-generated data across the organization. Elastic observability. Observability is a term used for operational excellence. It's a new level of operational excellence. It, it, it gives you operational monitoring and alerting for your environment. So elastic observability is used for operational monitoring. If you want to collect metrics about the CPU, the memory utilization, any other memory or any other um, or any other operational related metric, you use elastic observability. And last but not least, Elastic security. Elastic security is the one used for in order to use elastic in order to perform security monitoring for your organization, for your infrastructure, for your network, for your own environment. You use elastic security. We as Skillfield, we are a premium partner with um, elastic and we are specialized into deploying elastic for elastic observability and elastic security. Now, this stack can be deployed anywhere. You can even self-manage it and have it your own, have your own virtual machines or bare metal hardware, you, would, you name it. This stack can be deployed in a self-managed elastic stack. Or if you want, you can have an orchestrator from Elastic in order to help you with the deployment. That orchestrator will help you with upgrading the cluster and setting up cluster. When I'm saying cluster, it means all of these, setting up clusters, upgrading clusters, um, connecting clusters, etc. Those orchestrators, think about them like the management gate for the whole cluster, can be done either by using Elastic Cloud Enterprise, that's Elastic version or elastic flavor of orchestrator or Kubernetes. We understand that Kubernetes is very familiar. So we have, you can have an orchestrator for the elastic stack on Kubernetes. 
last but not least, there's a stance of a, there's an Elastic Cloud version of Elastic available as well. It's very easy to use. I think you can get free trial for 14 days for certain um, setup and configurations. I would encourage all of you to use it. With Elastic Cloud, it's very easy to deploy. You don't need to worry about hardening the underlying infrastructure or hardening the software or um, ensuring the high availability of the underlying hardware or the network capacity, etc. Elastic is taking over all of these from you and they are working on providing you the best experience with Elastic Cloud. So with this stack that provides a complete end-to-end -end capability for any data engineering pipeline, the beats, the uh, log stash, endpoints, elastic search, and Kibana. With those three use cases, enterprise search, observability, security, plus bring your own use case, any other use case. With all those deployment options, Elastic Cloud, Elastic Orchestrator, Kubernetes, or Elastic Cloud Enterprise, or self-managed, this brings to you unlimited possibilities. Just mix and match, and you can do whatever you want, whatever your business requires, all is based on the main search function for the data. Something worth mentioning is that Elastic has invested in something called Elastic Common Schema. Elastic Common Schema is a data model that Elastic has prepared. So when the data is coming and tagged using the beads, they are tagged and they are parsed then against this common schema. When you are developing your own parser on Logstash, we are highly recommending that you follow the Elastic Common Schema. Why? Because if later on Elastic issues a bit module for your data source, then you can simply move towards that data model because at the end of the day, we are you will you are following the same Elastic Common Schema. Elastic Common Schema is a data model that Elastic is using for their um, for their data, data model. And we highly recommend that whenever you want to work on a use case, you follow the same schema. Of course, you can build your own data model. However, we highly recommend that you follow this, the same data model because Elastic is investing heavily in the product. There are always new features and you need to be able to use them with your data. So from what we've said, Elastic Stack enables you to store and analyze your data using the power of search store and analyze your data using the power of search. So I will be talking in the next few slides quickly about the power of search, the stack as multiplier, and the de deployment flexibility. So first of all, the power of search. Remember what we said. We want to search the data at a scale. We want to get relevant information, and we want to have data real time. The way we are doing it is by Elastic Stack. So how do they do this? So first of all, Elastic Stack is scalable. If you want to install Elastic on your own laptop, and run it to analyze data, that's possible. If you want to install on hundreds of servers, it's possible as well but to process petabytes of data. Elastic is scalable. The second one is Elastic works on a distributed model by default. The way Elastic process the data, Elastic breaks down the data into different shards, what they are called shards. Think about them in the world of the database, they are partitions into multiple shards. And those shards are replicated, so there's a replication factor as well. This enables the distributed data storage and the distributed data processing that enables real time and enables quick and fast response as well. In terms of relevancy, and I haven't, um, it's not mentioned here, just to recognize, in terms of relevancy, the relevancy, it's being done by the um, algorithms of search that you can identify uh, how many. Um, character to match, what are the relevancy requirements for you in order to, and Elastic will do the search and return the results. It's very flexible in that area. Last but not least, Elastic is secure by design. If you want, if you are deploying Elastic, you don't need to worry about access control. You don't need to worry about auditing or, uh, or um, RVAC, rule-based access control, or access list, or data segregation, or SSL and TLS certificates, all of those aspects that you consider when you are designing a solution, they are all there by default in Elastic. When I'm saying by default, you still need to configure them, but what I mean is that they are all there in Elastic. All you need to do is to configure them and ensure, of course, that you have the right license 
that enables you to have the right security feature. Elastic stack as a multiplier, one stack faster innovation. As I said, with Elastic, you can use it for the predefined applications, the um, enterprise search observability security, or you can have it on your own application or your own use case. Elastic has features. Those features, if you follow the Elastic common schema that I mentioned about earlier, they are reusable across all those applications as well as they are reusable for your use case. What are those multipliers? First of all, alerts and action. Alerts and actions is a feature used in security. Alerts and actions is a feature used in observability as well. What you can do is that you can simply use this alerts and action feature as well for your own use case. With this feature, Alerts, it means that you analyze the data in order to identify certain um, the criteria. And if it matches the criteria, you can alert, you can take an action. You can send an email, communicate to Slack or Teams or, or other integrations as Elastic is developing those integrations. So number one is the alerts and actions. The second one is the machine learning. So Elastic machine learning is very um, a powerful feature as well that if you're following the elastic common schema, you can use it for your own use case. And as well as you can use it across those predefined applications. Astrid will be demonstrating a little bit about elastic machine learning later today. Elastic maps, so elastic maps, if you have the geo information and you're following the elastic common schema, it means that you can use the elastic, the elastic maps. Kibana Lens, Things, think about it like a very interactive way in order to do data analysis and data visualization. So within last Kibana Lens, you can drag and drop certain columns and features, and that will give you um, the, the uh, analysis that you that you want. Kibana Lens thinks about it like the Tableau or the Power BI of Kibana. It's a very friendly and easy to use tool in order to analyze your data. Last but not least, we talked about the deployment flexibility. As I said earlier, the deployments are very, um, there are three options for deployments, whether you want to have Elastic Cloud or you want to have an Elastic Orchestrator, Elastic Cloud Enterprise or Kubernetes, or Elastic Search Service, if you are having um, a full Elastic Cloud. Those deployment options are for you. This diagram, highlights what are the responsibilities if you are doing self-managed and then you can, as you can see on the right side, self-managed means, means that everything is on you. It, it reduces the more towards you depend on Elastic and it's really all you need to worry about is the data mapping. This is the, um, the common schema or the data mapping and the shard sizing. This is the size of the data that you want to store. Everything else is managed by Elastic. We are proud and happy to be Elastic Premium Partner. So if you need any help or if you have any questions about Elastic deployments, um, whether it's for one of those three use cases or any use case, please feel free to reach out to us. Without no further ado, I will hand over to Astrid so she can do a demo for us. So please confirm you can see the screen. Yeah, thanks a lot. Okay, so as just mentioned, Kibana is the uh, front end application for users to search and visualize data indexed in Elasticsearch. So the purpose of this demo is to walk you through the process of visualizing and analyzing data using Kibana. Just to let you know, the data site used for demo contains historical stock prices from 10 companies listed on the Australian Securities Exchange. I uploaded the CSV files through Kibana UI directly. You can see it here. Well, in the real world cases, you may choose elastic agents like these or Logstash or other tools to ingest, for example, your real time log files. Okay, so before we can view the data, we need to tell it which Elasticsearch index to use. We do this by defining the index Python under the stack management uh, menu. So if you 
C we create index pattern and select standard template. I named the index uh, as ASX historical when I uploaded the file so I can type ASX and add it with a wildcard. The index will be found here. We can also define a time filter field if we are looking at uh, a time series data. To save time, you can see here is the index pattern I have already created. The index pattern page shows all the fields in the index and what their data types are. For example, you can see the stock code, uh, the open price, close price, the date, and even adjusted close price, uh, including dividends. So some may, someone may have a question, what if I also want to see the total value of a stock, but I cannot find it here in the fields. So you can use the scripted field function to compute the data on the fly. For example, here I created a field called stock value, and it is calculated by the adjusted close price times volume. Okay, so now we have the index pattern ready. We can go to the Discover page to inspect our data. On the left, you can see the index pattern name and a list of fields in the index. In the main area, there is the distribution of events over time and the actual list of documents. It will be easy for you to look at a particular time window by clicking on the time picker on the top right. You can see some commonly used options are available here. You can also specify a time range by yourself, of course. So the next step is to expand the document to look at in more detail. Here all the fields, including the scripted field, are shown with their corresponding values. There are some actions you can do with the fields. For example, um, I can add the field as a column to a table. So I just added stock value maybe. I will add stock code and the close value as well. So here's how we can view the data from uh, in a table format. You can also include or exclude a document with certain a certain value in the index. For example, is anyone interested in the share price of Qantas? We can include stock code as QAN, and here is the result. It can also easily to be removed. It is also possible to run queries on the documents using the search bar. For example, let's say if I want to have a look at all the stocks with a close price higher than 30. And maybe meanwhile the stock code is not DBA, let's see. And the query will return the result in it's, yeah, it may, it may take some time. Yeah. Okay, so here are the results returned by the query. So apart from the um, sorry, let me change. Apart from searching across the data. One of the great, uh, one of the most critical functions of Kibana is to create interactive dashboards. So here is a sample dashboard based built on the stock price data site. From the dashboard, we can see uh, the total number of stocks we are tracking, the latest changes in the average price or volume for the last one day. We can also have a look at the uh, daily high and low prices over time, as well as the how the stock value fluctuated by plotting differences against date. Additionally, the dashboard also shows the top five stocks sorted by their volumes. 
Of course, you can add more visualization panels as you like. Well, just to let you know, Kibana supports different visualization types, including pie chart, heat maps, or the lens map was just mentioned, or even geo maps that shows geographical locations. Okay, let's go back to the dashboard. So um, if I want to look closely at a certain time period, I can easily zoom in by selecting and dragging on the visualization. The dashboard also allows you to use the search bar or the time picker as well. Here, I also created a control panel for users to select stock code from a given list. For example, if I select BHP and I apply changes, notice how the rest of the dashboard respond to reflect to the change in field of filter. And you can also configure the dashboard to refresh after a certain, certain time period to get a real-time insight. So last but not least, I think it is worth mentioning that Kibana has machine learning features to fulfill different data analytics requirements. So here is just a simple example that detects patterns in the adjusted codes price against time for A2M. The beauty of it is that we can know the focused value by just one click. So here we can see the expected price for the next month. Okay, so I hope you can see how Kibana helps us in searching and uh, visualizing data from this demo. And that's the that's all I want to share with you today. I will give it back to Moaz. Thank you so much, Astrid. I think by now we will stop the recording. Thank you all. And we'll open the forum for questions.